Welcome to Flourishing Five. My name is Heather Lawton, and every Friday I share a story, a lesson, or a quick idea with the goal of helping you gain a new perspective. If you are listening to this episode on your favorite podcast player, first of all, thank you, but I'm going to insist that you close that player and watch this episode on YouTube because you will definitely want to catch my facial expressions for the story I'm going to share today. Today, in fact, is Tuesday. This episode will be released on Friday. I had scheduled this time to record, and yesterday I had a few ideas about what I wanted to talk about, and then we had a situation here on our homestead, and I was thinking to myself last evening, I'm not sure if I'm ready to talk about this. I don't know if it's appropriate. I'm not certain what the lesson is here just yet. There are probably several, but the truth is it's literally the only thing I can think about and I'm just unable to focus on anything else. So I'm going to share the story, but first I need to give you a little bit of background information. We live on 35 acres just outside of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. It is January. The temperature has been hovering in the mid twenties. We've had a week of like pretty consistent snow, a couple of snow storms. So on our property right now is probably a foot or two in different areas of snow. There was some ice involved. So pretty treacherous conditions. Also, my parents live with us. My mom is 76. My dad is 77. They are in relatively good health. Although my mom has had a couple of back surgeries, foot surgery, and she has a pretty extreme form of rheumatoid arthritis. So she's in a lot of pain, a lot of the time. And one thing she does to combat that is she takes three walks every single day on the trails on our property. The the circle that her and my dad have marked is about half a mile long. They walk it in the morning and in the afternoon and right after dinner with their dogs. My parents are extremely routine. Now, my mom is so hardcore and so determined to keep herself in shape to fight the effects of the pain and the aging and everything she's feeling that she will walk in the woods no matter what the conditions are, rain, sleet, snow, sunshine, as if she thinks she's part of the postal service or something. Yesterday, like every other day, they decide to go out on their walk. It's their afternoon walk, which happens right after their nap. They nap for a few hours in the afternoon. They get up, they take their walk. I am sitting here in my office at my desk. I am recording Lightroom videos for the Flourish Academy, and I hear my dad's tractor. Now, that's not unusual because he does a lot of the plowing. We have a very, very steep driveway, kind of like a mountain pass. And I had asked him earlier if he would pick up Evan from the bus stop. The bus goes to our church. It does not come into the middle of the woods. So someone has to drop Evan off in the morning and pick him up in the afternoon. And he said, yes. So when I heard the tractor, I assumed they had already gone on their walk and he was plowing the driveway. I look out my window and I see him coming across the driveway with my mother in the bucket of the tractor. Well, instantly I know something is very seriously wrong. So I am out of my chair and I am outside. At the same time, I see him pulling out his phone to call me. And I'm like, yeah, I'm out here. What happened? Mom fell. She landed funny on her leg and she thinks that she broke her leg. Can you get Craig? So we can try to get her in the car. I need to get her to the ER. So I get my husband, we get he pulls the tractor into the garage right next to the car. My mother is soaking wet, freezing cold, laying in the bucket of a tractor. And she said, I can't move my leg. I think I broke it. And I was like, wait, what? Okay. What? So she's wearing her ski coat, her ski hat, her gloves, her boots, but she was wearing jeans, which was not a good idea because she ended up laying in the snow and getting wet. But I was like putting all of this together rapidly. And I said, wait a second. So you fell out in the woods on the trail and dad left you there in the snow while he walked back to the house, got the tractor. Oh wait, no, the plow was on the tractor, which means he had to change out the plow and put on the bucket and then go back and retrieve you from the woods. 
And then he decided to call me. I mean, do I have this right? I said, mom, how long were you laying in the snow? And she said, it felt like a very long time. Well, I was like out of my mind. First of all, my dad, my dad, my dad is old school. My dad is like a mountain man and everything to him is like not as bad as it seems. He tends to not understand the gravity of any situation. Case in point in 2020, mom fell. She tripped over something outside in the driveway. She landed face first so hard on the gravel driveway that she knocked herself out. She has blood and scrapes all over her face. She can't move her arm. She's, she's disoriented. And my dad says, oh, it's, it's worse. It, it looks worse than it is. I, th- I, th- I think she's fine. Comes in and sits down in his recliner. And I'm like, I'm taking her to the ER. Turns out she had a broken wrist and a massive gaping hole in her lip, blood all over her face. He just minimizes everything. I said, you, okay. Okay. You left mom laying in the snow around 25 or 26 degrees. So now she's getting wet and freezing, probably in shock with her leg, like under her body, funny, she's in pain. And you came back to, um, I'm sorry, sir. You could have called me. I could have run out there with a blanket, you know, got her propped up while Craig got the tractor to make all of this happen faster. And he was like, oh no, she's, (laughs) she's okay. (laughs) No, she is not okay. And I'm sitting here picturing all of this happening. And I'm thinking about how I'm sitting at my desk and I see my mom in the bucket of the tractor as she's coming across the driveway. Oh my gosh. Okay. So then he starts to try to get her out of the bucket. We've got to somehow roll her out and get her into the car, but she's in a lot of pain. I think she's going into shock and she she can't move her leg and she's saying it really hurts. Okay. So my dad's like, well, I'll, I'll put a splint on it. So I see him. Meanwhile, I run in to get another blanket. I see him grab two by fours and duct tape. I'm like, okay, deep breathing. And then he, he attempts to put this splint on her, but he doesn't know how to do that. So in order to get it where he wants, he manipulates her leg and she starts like yelling, no, like, ow, ow, Bill, that hurts. And I'm like, dad, you bring the splint to the leg. You don't manipulate the leg into the splint. It's broken. Okay. So he, I have a picture of this, by the way, if you want to see it, let me know. It's a little bit disturbing. I just wanted to doc, I document things. Okay. So he gets that wrapped up. We roll her out. We get her into the car, cars on He heated seats. I wrap her all up and, you know, wish her well, let me know when you get there. I said, Oh, you know what? She left her phone up at the church when she was at work this morning. You might want to swing in there and grab it. So she has it in case you can't go back to her room with her. So he says, yeah, right. Okay. So he goes up to the church, he gets her phone and then he calls me and he says, Hey, this is at three 30 PM. He says, Hey, you want me to get Evan off the bus? No, no. I want you to get my mother to the hospital. Evan's bus comes at three 40. This is at 3 30 and Evans bus was actually about 45 minutes late because it was really snowing and the roads were really bad. So was he just going to wait there for 45 minutes while my mother sat in the car, freezing in shock with a broken leg. I'm telling you, this guy just does not think I posted about this on Facebook asking for prayers and everybody's like, Oh, your dad, your dad is like such a country survivor, man. He's like, He's like MacGyver. He can do anything. I'm like, no, you guys, he's an idiot. This, none of this was well thought out. Oh, Heather, relax. He's probably just doing the best he can. Okay. Maybe, maybe, but there was just like no thinking involved. Okay. What? This drives me crazy. And she, my mom knew I was going to blame him for all of this somehow. And she's like, I was taking my walk, my own free will. It's not your dad's fault. And I'm like, yes, it is <laughs> getting all kinds of crazy. All right. He gets her to the hospital. She's there all evening. Turns out she broke both of the bones in her lower leg, the tibia and the fibula. So they kept her overnight for surgery today. As of this recording, she is not in surgery yet because apparently there are a lot of people in the hospital with um, similar accidents. And because hers is non-emergent, she gets pushed to the end of the day. So I talked to her this morning. She was very groggy and tired. You know, you can't sleep in the hospital. And I said, mom, I have been telling you for years that you have one job and that is to stay upright, just stay upright. And thankfully 
this wasn't a hip because this could be much worse. I recognize that. And she said, yeah, yeah, I know. And I said, I appreciate your desire to stay fit and keep yourself healthy, but it, it was really bad out yesterday and maybe you should have stayed in. And she says, I know I, I, she said, I told myself, I'm going to start listening to you from now on. Cause I could just kick myself. And I said, no, you can't kick yourself because you broke your leg, which made her laugh because it was funny. And okay, that's the story. And I was talking to some of my family members about this share and they're laughing, you know, and they're like, should we be laughing? Cause this really isn't funny. And I said, no, it isn't funny, but yes, it kind of is funny. So the lesson for me, there's a million and I'll probably unpack them further as I talk through this with my therapist in a few weeks. But one of them is I always make jokes and I laugh in the face of trauma and adversity. It's just one of my coping mechanisms. If you're in my life, then you know this. And if you're not, and I make some ridiculous joke that's at an inappropriate time, I apologize. Um, I'm just trying to deal with the situation. But I wish... I mean, it was, it was an emergency, so I couldn't have done this, but I wish I had video of him driving my mother in the bucket of the tractor across the driveway in all of this snow in freezing cold temperatures. And then I said, how did you get her in the bucket without any help? Oh, I lowered it all the way down as I could and just kind of like scooched her in it, you know? Well, then when he lifts, I've, I've ridden in the bucket of this tractor. Okay. So I know this to be fact. When he lifts the bucket and tilts it back, it's not this like beautifully smooth. It's like super, super jerky. And then when you're driving, you know, it's very, very bouncy and hard. Oh my gosh. So my mom is in the bucket of a tractor. She is 76 years old. She is soaking wet with a broken leg. And my dad's just driving his tractor. Like, like it's a beautiful day in the field and he's, I don't know, mowing something or collecting pumpkins. I don't know. It's, oh, anyway, I, when I posted this on Facebook, there were some people that were like, I want to laugh, but I don't know that if that's appropriate. And I would say, yes, you may laugh because it is funny. And I trust that she will be okay. And we will have a long road ahead of us. I said, when she was in the bucket and we were trying to get her out, I said, mom, if you didn't want to cook dinner tonight, like you could have just asked for help, which made her laugh. And then a little bit later, I said, wait a minute are you trying to get out of going to church on Sunday? Because they're planning to honor her retirement at church. And she's really quite introverted and shy that way. She doesn't like the attention. And, and she laughed. And I said, I just, I just need you. I just need you to promise me that you will try to stay upright. I hope that you found this funny, useful, insightful. Heather's crazy. No, no. Uh, maybe a little bit dramatic and extreme. She's going to be okay. Everybody's going to be okay. Please say a prayer for her. She goes into surgery. Obviously, as you're watching this, she is hopefully home and resting and recovering. But I think it's going to be a long road ahead for her just because of her arthritis and all the pain that she's in. I'll see you in the next episode.